Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church. Good morning, Facebook Live World. It's a good day to be alive. Coming in a little early this morning, amen, have a funeral this afternoon, and I just wanted to come on and do the broadcast and go ahead and sit back and get prepared for this funeral. A uh, young man that uh, we had a pretty good relationship, and uh, me and his father was best of friends. He has uh, gone on to the other side. Pray for the Smith family, the Smith Ivy family, please. Amen. Young man, Liddell Smith, passed away the first beginning of this week, and we're going to finalize him this afternoon. So y'all, pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. Let me do a little house cleaning. We still wearing our face masks. We're still social distancing. Still washing our hands, hand sanitizing. Because uh, uh, the coronavirus, the pandemic, is not over. It's still here. Amen. So we must act like it's still here. Man, the news is there's a new variant, and it's meaner and badder than the first one. And it's in Mississippi right now. So we must be vigilant. We must be vigilant, and we must continue to keep our guards up. Amen. Do the things that's going to protect you, your family, and other people also. Amen. This coming Wednesday night, don't forget, 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to try to launch our Bible study again, once again. And we're going to do it until we you know, do it right, until we get some results. We may do another different format in the future, but right now, we're, we're doing the, uh, it's, uh, I ain't going to even try to say what it is, but Y'all have the, uh, the site. I sent it to uh, email uh, many of you. Go back and look at your emails and your text messages and join in with us this coming Wednesday night. Not going to be long today. Uh, still in the Lenten season. We're on the road to Calvary. On the road to Calvary. We have picked up our crosses and we're carrying them. We're following with Jesus. Amen. Man, right now, let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is our righteousness. And because of Jesus, we can stand in your presence. And when we stand in your presence, we can expect to receive answers to our prayers. We are thankful that he bore our sins in his own body on that tree. Thankful that he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Thankful that he took our infirmities and bore our sickness. And by his stripes, we are healed. And because of Jesus, we have overcome sickness and disease by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Right now, Lord, look down, look within all of us, Lord, right now. And there's no doubt you will find something in us that's not like you. But Lord, don't remove us. Remove it, Lord. Sin. Remove it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, and when you remove it, clean us up, Lord, and use us in the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, we're praying right now for all the sick, all the shut-in, all the bereaved families right now, which are many, Lord. We're praying right now for you to... Heal and deliver right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Church them right now, Lord, wherever they are right now, whatever situation, whatever circumstance they're in right now, touch them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We stand in agreement right now that your will be done. Not our will, but your will be done. Lord, in the midst of this pandemic, we will continue to lift up your name in the midst of every sanctuary that we attend, in the midst of this sanctuary, right, as we stand right here, we will praise you, we will exalt your name, oh Lord. Right now we will do it, we will do it not just for show, not just for form. 
We will do it not just for a short while, but we will bless your name forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Not going to be long today. Amen. I just wanted to come and give you a word from the Lord. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord. I want you to just listen to what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I heard a lot of folks sometime, and I was this way. I can talk about me. Uh, I go and I say, I didn't get nothing out of that. Why you didn't get nothing out of that? I had to grow in Christ to learn. I had to bring something to put in it to get out of it. So bring something this morning. Bring, bring something this morning. God is waiting with his arms standing wide open, waiting on you, and he's waiting on me. Time is winding down. Time is winding down. And before I preach, I just I just got to share a testimony. Uh, uh, early Wednesday morning as I was traveling home, had I had gotten off of work. And 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 and, and it was uh, tornado watches, severe thunderstorm watches out and all Tuesday and Wednesday. And as I was traveling, I seen a phenomenon. I knew it wasn't nothing but God. The whole sky, like the whole world, lit up. It looked like wings. The wings were everywhere. And I said, oh, Lord, here it is. Here he is right now, Lord. I look to be going up in the air at any second. But the Lord said, not now. But I'm on my way back. The Lord is on his way back, church. We need to get ready and stay ready. Giving us signs every day, every minute. Earthquakes, tsunamis, thunder, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes. Then the next day, come on, y'all. Turn with me to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I will be reading verses 1 through 12. Psalm 51, 1 through 12. And it reads, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is always before me against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner part. You teach me wisdom in the inmost part, place. Cleanse me with his heart, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12 reads, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just want to use for a topic this morning, blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. Amen. Psalm 51 contains the heart, the heartfelt cry of a grief-stricken sinner because of the sin that had polluted his heart and deprived him of the joy of fellowship with God. 
let us earnestly pray that we might be kept from the sin into which David fell. We would be very wise to always flee from temptation and avoid the appearance of evil. For no one, hear me now, no one is immune to temptation. A study of the experience of David right here with Bathsheba, it is beneficial to all of us, especially in this day when moral standards have been abandoned. Folk don't care. They do anything, anywhere, any high, any, any kind of way all around you. Great or hair don't mean nothing. They don't care. This moral standards have been abandoned during these last and evil days. And because of his sin, David suffered greatly. Sin always results in suffering. Let me say it again. Sin always result in suffering. David could no longer enjoy peace of heart and mind. Look, church, when, when you're in a lot of sin, you cannot enjoy a peace of heart and mind. You will be like David. He was crushed by the burden of his guilt. Behind these confessions and petitions in Psalm 51, one can see the barren destitution of the heart and life when sin was confessed and forgiven. Now, while a few of us have sinned in the manner of which David sinned, we all must recognize that all of us, him and I, all of us are sinners, and all of us are in need of forgiveness. David's guilt right here should be a, a example for us. Romans 5 and 12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people, because all sin. But listen to me now, there is some good news on today. The good news is the fact that none of us have to remain in a willful lifestyle of sin. Because the price to redeem and reconcile us back to a right relationship with God the Father was paid once and for all by Jesus on that cross. Blot out my transgression. Jesus shed in his blood on the cross for our redemption, church. Blot out my transgression. Romans. 5 and 19 said, just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. So also, through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. The truth of the matter this morning is the fact that on our own and by our own efforts, we are not righteous. No, we are not. No, none is righteous. Not one, but one. Jesus the Christ. Sin has affected what we say. Sin has affected what we do. Sin has affected what we think. Therefore, hear me good. Now, our goodness is not good enough to meet God's standard of righteousness. So that's why we have Jesus. Because Jesus knew no sin, he was perfect in all his ways, and he submitted to the will of God by his obedience. He did it by everything that he did. He did it by everything he said, and everything he even thought about. He alone is righteous. He alone is the one who is able to atone us for our sin. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 said, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
Lord, blot out my transgression. Because of what Jesus Christ did on behalf of sinners like me and you, by faith, the Apostle Paul declared these words in Galatians 2 and 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Blot out my transgression. As I get ready to close this morning, I want somebody to know none of us are exempt from the penalty of sin and death. But have you taken inventory of your life? Are you in the process right now of surrendering your life over to Christ? And you do it by submission and to his authority. The life of yours that you think your own is no longer yours. You have to do it by obedience to his word. And you do it by knowing the atoning work that Jesus Christ has done already upon that old cross there. When Christ look at us believers, he sees holiness. When Christ look at us believers, he sees perfection. When Christ look at us believers, he sees the righteousness of Christ Jesus because of our faith for what he has done on our behalf already by sending Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to die in our place on that cross. Somebody ought to shout right there. None of us are exempt from sin, nor is penalty. Blot out my transgression. It is time to repent, church, and turn to Jesus for the saving of our souls, for the days are evil. A young man went on a killing spree the other day. Just shot up, killed people, and was headed to kill some more before he was apprehended. And to show you how evil the day and times are, a spokesman for the police department said he was just having a bad day. Wow. A bad day in killing eight, nine people? That sounds like it was a horrible, evil day to me. We all, through this reading by David today, and these words that Christ has inspired me to give you, we all right now are aware of the truth that we are not exempt from sin. So how are we going to deal with it now? How are you going to deal with the truth this morning? How are you going to deal with the truth of our sinful nature? You're not exempt. I'm not exempt. This is how I deal with it. Lord, blot out my transgressions. Created me a clean heart, Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I know what direction I'm going in. What direction are you going in? What is your escape route this morning? Well, as I close this morning, I can tell you there is only one road, and that road is to Jesus. That is the true escape route. The days are evil, and we are living in perilous times. I plead with you. I beg you this morning. If you don't know Jesus, try him. He's standing with his arms wide open. Saying, come, my child. Come. Wherever 
where you are. Whatever condition, whatever state of mind you're in this morning, you have an invitation to come to Jesus. And get this, come just like you are. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Pray for me as I pray for you. Blot out my transgressions. Amen.